Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the mailbox for the 14th of November 2011. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily dose of community interaction, gaming discussion, and all that good stuff. You can email in mailbox at cynicalbrit.com. That is mailbox at cynicalbrit.com with topics for future shows. The game in the background is Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. No, I will not be making a WTF is for the umpteenth time, and no, I will not be making any kind of review style content for this game. It's not going to happen. Everyone's making Skyrim content. It is a bandwagon that I have absolutely no interest in riding, and it is too large a game to properly display in a first impression style of content. But no doubt I will talk about it in Mailbox as people have numerous questions on the subject. Just FYI, before I get started, my schedule for this week is as follows. I will be providing you Mailbox content today through to Thursday, on Friday until Monday of this week, that's November 18th to the 21st, I will be down in Telford, UK for the IPL4 UK qualifier and Insomnia 44 LAN. So uh, I will try and provide some video content while I'm there, but I just cannot promise anything for obvious reasons. I'll keep you posted as the rest of my schedule uh, once we get to that point, because people do seem to have short memories. I can't blame them. I do too. First email comes in from Charles that says, As you are no doubt aware, Skyrim released recently. Any amount of Googling would tell you that out of all of the gleaming reviews by users and paid critics, the one outstanding flaw, at least for the PC version, was the menu system. Having played the game on PC myself, it's quite apparent that the user interface would be quite comfortable on console, but it's barely functional on PC. It works just fine if you use WAS and D, but that isn't how a menu is supposed to work for a PC title. If I had five septims for every time I backed out of a vendor's list when I meant to select a different category, I would have fully furnished my second house by now. My question is this, with all the time and resources dumped into any game, especially a game in a series in which an unusually high percentage of players choose PC, why would Bethesda opt to simply port in the user interface from the consoles? Certainly it wouldn't have cost that much money to create a separate UI. Did Bethesda skip this for the sake of profit, or do they imagine that they expect the dedicated modding community to ease the pain? Well, I think it's maybe a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B from that one. The user interface is, quite frankly, atrocious. There was a really good article over on Rock, Paper, Shotgun today on the subject of that. I was written by Jim, who is a dedicated writer for Rock, Paper, Shotgun, also uh, wrote a book called This Gaming Life. Yeah, he kind of knows his stuff. It's really as simple as that. And he put down a very detailed article on the subject of the UI and how awful it is. And he was quite vitriolic about it. And quite frankly, I don't blame him for doing just that. It's a really good article. I'll put it in the description below this video so you can have a look at it. Sadly, some of you decided it was a good idea to get on his back about it after I retweeted it. Which is quite crazy really i just want to point this out guys if you are really really enjoying a game someone else's opinion of it shouldn't make you angry especially when it comes down to something that is let's be honest not very good it's something that you will have soldiered through if you spent a lot of time playing skyrim on pc and you'll have eventually got used to it as you tend to with anything that's rather annoying if there's an annoying buzz in your ear for the first couple of hours, it'll be irritating and present, and then you'll sort of get used to it. It's the same with the Skyrim UI. And then, of course, you think that it's okay. That's the mistake that you make. It is not okay. Doesn't mean it's a bad game. It evidently isn't. I don't think anyone's going to call Skyrim a bad game. But I don't know, they might when the next one comes out, just like they did with Oblivion. I remember that, oh, Oblivion, amazing, great, great. And then, of course, the years go on, and we hear about Skyrim, so, oh, Oblivion was terrible. God, I hope the next one... You, you were crowing about it on the first few days of release, and you play like 300, 400 hours of it, and then you turn around and say it's a bad game. What is wrong with gamers these days? I swear to God, it makes me want to slap them through the internet. It's got a really bad UI. Like I said, it's mostly keyboard-driven. Mouse-driven doesn't work in a lot of areas, and... Uh, I found myself accidentally selecting the wrong dialogue choice as a result of the mouse accuracy being really off when it comes to that. It doesn't help that the X and Y axis are on separate mouse sensitivities for some reason. Don't really know what's going on there. That's even after mouse acceleration is turned off with a .ini fix, of which you have to use quite a few of, as far as I can tell, in order to get the game working properly and to your liking. All sorts of issues with it. The skill system menu is terrible. It's like, ooh, isn't this pretty? It's utterly impractical. It is a pain in the ass in order to use. It's, yes, it's nice looking, but if I wanted things that were nice looking, I'd go to a goddamn art gallery. 
This is a game I wanted to do what I wanted to do and do so in an efficient and effective manner that doesn't waste my goddamn time. There are all sorts of problems with it. Don't even get me started on the inventory and the way the favorites menu works. Blah! Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Anyway. To answer your question, I think it was a bit of column A, a bit of column B. Looking at the number of bugs that were in Skyrim on launch, one can safely say that the game was not finished. Then again, when are they? <laughs> when are Bethesda games ever finished? And they did set this ambitious launch date, and they kept it. They didn't push the game back, they didn't delay it, and I have to imagine that there were some things that could have been done there. And I think maybe given a couple of extra weeks, they could have put together an interface that would have worked really well on PC. It's an unfortunate slap in the face to PC users, considering they have supported Bethesda with great gusto over a great many years now, and the Elder Scrolls series, of course, would not even exist without the PC to begin with. But maybe they do have a bit of trust in their modding community, and perhaps they're looking to exploit them, saying, hey, okay, here's the console interface, but there's some modding tools, so you can fix it yourselves. Have fun! Uh, well, no, that doesn't excuse you, I'm afraid. Yes, it will make the game more playable when someone is able to change the interface around so that it works properly, but it is not an excuse simply to leave that out of there, and that's actually a very, very dangerous thing to do. I think almost Bethesda are exploiting the trust that's been put in them by PC gamers, and the fact that they are one of the few companies that still provides full and open modding tools for their games. And I, I appreciate that, I do, I really do. It's good that they do that, and I think that they've realized that it helps the longevity of sales of their titles, and people are still buying Oblivion with its various Game of the Year editions and so forth several years after it came out. It still sells to this very day whenever it goes on sale on Steam. So they realize that now, when it comes to selling PC games, you have to be in it for the long haul, and determining it by week one sales is stupid. What you want to be doing is seeing how many copies you can sell over several years, years at various different price points in order to really get an idea as to the worth of your title and provide a constant and steady stream of income. But that's no excuse for leaving the interface in the state that it's in. Fine for console, I'm sure, but once again, we've got a Bethesda game that doesn't really do the UI too well, and it's as a direct result of consoles. Oblivion had the same problem. They launched it with the idea that, yes, this is going to be on consoles as well, so we're going to make this UI that's sort of consoleified, and, oh, look, the PC version didn't work so well as a direct result of that, and there we go. We see Bethesda doing that once again, and that is something they need to stop. This one comes in from Ninthex that says, I was wondering what your thoughts are in regards to realism in games versus accessibility. The biggest example of this question would be something like helicopters in Battlefield games. I've heard a few people say that the handling of physics do fairly well at emulating real-life helicopters. The issue that I, and I'm sure quite a few others have with this, is that the controls are not very intuitive. W's change from forward to ascend, and your mouse has changed to movement. And it's extremely likely that if you try and fly one of these for the first time, you'll crash within five seconds, killing anyone lucky enough to have spawned on you. This is a great departure from other vehicle control setups, such as tank or flying in World of Warcraft, that are very easy to pick up without any prior experience. Is it a good thing that these games make these mechanics difficult as a consequence of emulating real life, or would you like to see them made more accessible to the average player? I don't want to see them made more accessible to the average player, quote-unquote, because I don't think the problem is with the handling schemes, it's with the lack of education given by the game. And for instance... Why is there not a system within the game where you can just practice helicopters? Why is there not a single player mission, for instance? Maybe there's an obstacle course, you fly through rings, something like that. Why is that not in the game to teach you proficiency? And if we were to go one stage further, why isn't there a license system within the game whereby you have to at least complete a helicopter tutorial before you are allowed to get into one in a multiplayer game? Why is that not in the game? There is a co-op mission whereby you can do that, but most people didn't bother with the co-op, and I can hardly blame them because it's particularly uninspired. So that's not so great. Why can't you just have a single-player training program within the game for all of the vehicles? That sounds like a good idea, particularly with the aircraft, because they are the most difficult, and when it comes to helicopters, they are a valuable resource. Jets, also a valuable resource. I'd say that helicopters more so because you are capable of doing a lot more with them and transport helicopters in particular, you've got to be extremely careful with because you can end up losing a ton of tickets if you're not careful. You get shot down on one of those things or you crash that into a mountainside because you're incompetent. Then, hey, your team's just thrown away five or six tickets and that is not good. 
So I think the game does a really bad job of teaching you how to use those vehicles. But I don't agree that the control system should be made simpler. I, I don't have a problem flying helicopters in Battlefield 3. Hell, it's even a little bit simpler than it was in Battlefield 2. It was a lot trickier then, and Desert Combat was extremely tricky to the mod for 1942. But the point of the fact is that they make the helicopters fly that way so that you have a certain degree of maneuverability. You went for arcade style controls on those helicopters, they wouldn't live anywhere near as long. The way that they handle allows them to survive longer. They are prime targets. You have to be able to swing them around in the way that you do there and utilize momentum in order to stay alive. And yes, it provides realism and authenticity to the game and that is important, but it is mostly from a gameplay standpoint about usability and about their viability in the combat zone. Good luck. Good luck surviving in a helicopter if it was arcade-style controls and just moved in a very obvious linear straight line. Oh, look, you've just been shot to pieces by every piece of AA there is on the map because you can't move in an unpredictable fashion. You can't swing around quickly. You can't move in the way that a helicopter does. You can't maneuver that way. You are just prime pickings, as far as I'm concerned. I don't think the helicopter controls in the Battlefield games are bad. I think they're extremely good, but they do take some getting used to. And when it comes to uh, realism and authenticity, authenticity is the priority for a Battlefield game. It's never really about realism, for God's sake. You can take five or six bullets to the chest, then regenerate after you hide for five seconds. A magical med kit on the floor has a healing aura. I mean, come on, really? It's not about realism. It is about authenticity, and that's fine. Authenticity matters. Realism actually isn't all that fun. And if you want a realistic game, if that's the kind of thing that you're after, then you can look towards a sim. You can look towards something like Armor 2. Hell, you can even look towards America's Army if you so desire. And, of course, all of the flight sims and things that are available there. And I don't want to see too many more simmy aspects inside Battlefield games. Because for the most part, the vehicles are very easy just to pick up, learn, and drive to a reasonably competent degree while having some room to maneuver and actually practice in order to get better. This one goes in from Mason that says, The day before Modern Warfare 3 came out, my friend and I were playing Black Ops to send it farewell to the depths of hell. We were playing Domination and it was pretty much just running around killing people. I was actually playing the objective. After the game, I came out on top with more points, but he said that I wasn't playing the game right. He said that if someone went 20 to 5 from not playing the objective, you get more XP than someone that goes 10 to 5 playing the objective. But I told him, by the magic of math, that's not how it goes. How do you feel about the stupid idea of losing the game, but getting a lot of kills being way better than actually winning the game and not getting a lot of kills? I'm starting to think that I need new friends. Well, you can't really blame him, right? It's the way that Call of Duty games have been, at least the modern Call of Duty games up until this point, from, really from Modern Warfare onwards. Kill streaks are what gives you this problem. You don't get kill streaks from playing the objective. This is something that Modern Warfare 3 has actually addressed to some degree. You can play support and you will be able to gain benefits from not just going around killing people. And it's weird that it's taken Modern Warfare this long and I suppose there's an irony in calling it modern warfare, to get on the modern train of, hey, you should be rewarded for tasks that are not just shooting people in the face because objective-based gameplay kind of revolves around playing the objective. I think that anyone that values their KD more than actually winning the game is a terrible teammate and is, quite frankly, a scourge upon the gaming community. So the same reason that it's okay to go negative KD in a game like League of Legends as long as it wins you the game, it doesn't really matter. Problem is, of course, in a game like that, if you're all going negative KD, then you're losing the game because the other team is over farm. But if one guy sacrifices himself deliberately, for instance, if he happens to be the tank, he gets a negative KD, but allows the team to actually win, then that's fine. That is a good thing indeed. When it comes to modern warfare, playing the objective has never really been a priority for people, let's be honest. Domination is more often than not played because you can actually rack up more experience points on that map because it tends to drag on longer and there are additional opportunities to earn experience. And it's, in my opinion, the easiest game mode. I mean, you're covered by your team. It's very obvious where the opponents are actually going to be. You're competing over control points that are very easy to farm kills on and, of course, to recapture and gain a ton of experience points in the 
process. That was my experience anyway. I noticed so many domination servers for Black Ops, particularly Nuketown domination, which is an incredibly stupid map and combination. But you got so much experience on that map, and that's why people played it. They never played the objective. It's a sad state of affairs, but when games continue to reward you for getting massive amounts of kills as opposed to actually playing the objective, then people are going to go for massive amounts of kills. Even if you do get more experience, which you do, I might add, from playing the objective, you are absolutely right about that. It doesn't matter, because playing the objective doesn't let you rain napalm or freaking B-52 carpet bombs down on your enemies. You get the flashy explosions if you get loads of kills. You get really... A something of a thankless job honestly if you decide to play the objective and then people whine at you for not having mad kds god it, it's a sad state of affairs modern warfare is responsible for a hell of a lot of bad gaming habits within the community and while it is not beyond salvage and they have taken some steps to rectify that with modern warfare 3 it is, without question, one of the worst multiplayer FPS when it comes to breeding terrible attitudes within players. And if you don't believe me, plug in your headset and go on Xbox Live for five minutes. Then you will. Okay, folks, that is me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching the mailbox. Don't forget to check out my WGF is Tribes Ascend that came out today. Highly recommend that if you are looking for a PC-specific shooter. Tribes Ascend may be right up your alley. I shall see you next time.